how to shorten and make stuff. All right, so here we are with the first scope. I'm just gonna put it here on the table. Um, I have the optical uh, finder scope here. I'll take the caps off. Now I can look through it, and yeah, sitting on the table is maybe not the best way of doing this. And it does give me a bit of a view, but let's go this way. All right, so first thing you have to do is obviously remove all the uh, eyepiece folders and covers. There we go. All right. And out of the eyepieces that you have, you're gonna wanna find the 20 millimeter, which comes with the scope. You're gonna wanna put it in here and tie it down. And then you're gonna wanna look through it and adjust until you see some stars. All right, so here you have the knob that does the adjustment. And basically, as it comes out, it's actually focusing closer. And then as it moves in, it's focusing farther away. Um, over here, you have the knob for all that. You can see that it, it just moves a little bit, and that means that I can then hand move the scope very easily. If you tighten it down a little bit like this, scope doesn't move at all. So you just want to let it go until you sort of feel that it's like, like this is too loose where it moves around freely. You just want it to the point where it just feels like you're, you're dealing with constant friction. And then, yeah, there you go. Just slightly move. The base has no friction knob on it. it. It moves actually very smoothly all by itself. So if you're having trouble with things moving, it won't be the rotation. It'll be trying to do this. So try to basically line up the scope with what you're hoping to see in this angle and then actually start to rotate the scope up and down until you find your target. And by doing it that way, it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to sort of move both axes. There we go. Now, you can do this with glasses, like I'm doing right here, but if you have a general idea of what you're looking at in the sky and stuff, once you find your target and you have it centered, I would generally recommend that you just sort of pop the glasses up, do a little refocus, and you're gonna get a little bit better view because you no longer have your glasses in the way. But if you're trying to find an object, if you need them, wear your glasses. It's a lot easier. And I have one hand on the bottom of the scope right here, and the other hand is on the control knob to give it a little bit so I can move it around. There we go. Now, one thing I do want to stress here is that when you are looking through this, you need really good night vision. Right now I have a little bit of light on um, so I can make this film without it being super grainy. So my night vision isn't as good as it could be, but it is one of those things to consider that you do want to get fully night vision, which takes about five, 10 minutes, depending on how old you are, maybe 15 for those of us that are, you know, elderly in age, in order to really be able to see the night sky and everything in it, you should be able to look up and see the Milky Way um, above you. If the Milky Way happens to be up, the time of year you're doing this. For me right now, it is, and I just start to see it. So let's see what we can find. Just now I find something. This is an important part where you pull out your app <laughs> and say, what is something? Oh, that's, yeah. Apps kill your night vision. Oh, so badly. Now you generally find targets using this by doing star hopping. So you find a bright star and then you hop um, from there to your targets. So one thing to consider when you're doing telescopes and looking through them for the first time is the image is actually inverted. And the reason for that is because to correct it so that up is up and down is down actually would add another optical element in there. And every time you add an optical element, you're reducing how much light gathering power the telescope can do. So all telescopes always show it upside down. Now, if you're looking through a camera, you will see it right side up because similar to camera lenses, they actually image on the sensor upside down, inverted, and then the camera itself, just simply because of the manufacturers, know how the camera's actually working, 
they actually flip it and post. So just a thing to remember when you're trying to find something. All right, now that you found your target, which happens to be the Hercules Star Cluster, then you start switching up to uh, closer and closer lenses to get that closer view. Keeping in mind that the target is actually moving because this is a stationary scope. So you do want to be a little quick on it. Alright. And you will have to refocus between each eyepiece. And probably do a little bit of repositioning too. That's pretty good. And that's with the 12 and a half. I probably would not go any higher than the 12 and a half for the Hercules Star Cluster. While I can get a little bit higher magnification, it is moving across the field pretty quick. So you'd want to use the other ones for big bright targets so you can watch them as they pass by your field of view. So I'll finish up here with the moon and basically this is a nice little telescope. It's great for beginners and overall I had some fun using it in the night. If you'd like to know more, please check out my other video where I do talk about a full review of this telescope.